every year level, the number of lessons is less than the number of days available for teaching, especially in year one, also in year two. Because we know year one, there are more issues connected to children coming up to year one. The ability level might be a very, very wide range. So we know there are things like that. So for that reason, England's national curriculum have fewer topics in year one as you would expect it to be. So for that reason, the number of lessons in year one is a lot less than the number of days available for teaching so that you might be able to spend three days on two lessons instead of one lesson a day. Put it simply, there are buffer days. Let me use an example from year two. If you're leaving out lessons, my suggestion is not to leave out entire chapters. Let us use the example of subtraction. Let us just walk through the segment of the chapter which is on subtracting. So the first lesson is this, right? 28 minus 3. Second lesson is this, 40 minus 10. The next lesson, 36 minus 20. So do, do you see the progression? Every lesson is different. The first day's lesson is really just taking away the ones. It's actually a year one lesson, counting back. The second day's lesson focuses on the 10 and only the tens. The third day lesson, taking away the tens, but there's a distractor of a ones. So you do notice that there are some lessons you can skip if you don't have time. You probably will take out lessons that you know, oh, if I miss this, the other lesson will compensate for it. So for example, if I have left out this lesson, 40 take away 10, but I do 36 take away 20, my students are not missing out because in doing 36 take away 20, you are still doing three tens take away two tens, which was a lesson before. Just that in designing the lesson, we try to make the gaps between lessons very, very small for year one and year two uh, because of, you know, they are year one and year two, so we do not make the gap big. But if you are running out of time, you can kind of sacrifice some of this, in your opinion, easier lesson that the concept will be dealt with anyway in a future lesson. So that's my suggestion. Sit down as a team, if you have a team teaching the same year level, and decide we are running out of time. So for that chapter, which are the ones we might want to leave out? I don't think there's a blanket answer to that decision. It, it varies depending on the type of students you have. Some chapters in Book B are less critical. England's national curriculum is consistent with international research Children are better off if they get a lot of inputs on number topics. For that reason, the curriculum is pretty heavy on number topics. And hence, you notice the book, a lot of number topics. So that's consistent with findings on children's learning. So the second book, Book B, tend to have very few number topics. It's mostly application of, in the context of, say, measurements or graphs. So in those cases, I, I would still not recommend you sacrifice the entire chapter, but for certain chapters like measurement, you kind of know that if I don't do every single lesson, it's quite all right, but you will still give them a flavor of that chapter so that they have some sense of what measurement is, measurement of length, for example. But I may not do every single lesson because I know in the later lessons, they might be using adding in measurement. So adding has been dealt with. If I give up adding, they're not missing anything. If you enjoyed the video, then why not hit the like button? Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, to stay up to date with our latest videos. If you want to check out more videos, then click on the right to dive into another topic. Thanks for watching.